Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my show Rocket Monday. In today's episode, we're gonna talk about reusable rockets as an overview, as a, what is the new thing in 2020. So first you have to understand the idea and history behind it. Now you have to understand rockets are expensive. Even uh, back in 1969 it was super expensive. Saturn V was ludicrously expensive and Energia rocket from USSR was even more expensive. So people knew from day one rockets are expensive and it is not a good idea to throw them away unless they are ICBMs. So you have to understand that the reason why that nobody could reuse a rocket properly back then is simply they did not have the spare power. You have to understand that this is the early days of rocket reading. Like rocket engines are barely producing power they are barely putting uh, you know things in orbit reliably so to say so in that time you think of it this way like your satellite needed uh, let's say 100 uh, energy in order to put it in orbit but your rocket was barely capable of doing 110 would you risk that uh, extra 10 in any way no you will be like dude i need that space just to make sure that orbit is perfectly circular or perfect altitude now as we understand uh, about uh, you know fluid dynamics aerodynamics uh, better uh, fuel burning capacities better engines and all that then we got the spare power to do anything because everything you want to do in, in basically universe you need energy for that we did not have that spare energy in the first place that is why saturn 5 even if they wanted to they could not reuse it simply because to go to the moon it required so much delta v they if they try to reuse it they will be like yeah our payload capacity went from 150 ton to low earth orbit to like you know 50 ton to low earth orbit so that is the whole uh, reality of it now even with that as engines started to become better and better people did try to reuse it i mean space shuttle is a proper reuse vehicle yeah it's not 100 percent reusable but they did try to reuse the uh, basically outer casing of solid boosters and uh, the main shuttle basically rocket engine was completely intact crew compartments were com basically this whole thing came out only fuel tank was 100 percent disposed and uh, solid booster they had to refurbish now again that was an idea but economics did not work out it was too complicated to who ha was in this so it did not work out that well on top of that while this was going on people started with uh, mcdonald's douglas dcxa now this is literally the foundation on which spacex system is built you have to understand this idea like space has had the luxury of that there are many projects before uh, basically spacex that tried to do this and failed now all of them had some uh, teachings because think of this way let's say right now isro starts to, uh, wants to make a let's say a reusable rocket and they are like hey we have to have grid fins now from day one they know that they cannot use aluminium grid fin because they have seen spacex using it they have seen the consequence of that like yeah it's cheap but it keeps destroying itself you have to keep replacing it it's cheaper to get for titanium or they might be like you know how about we reduce our payload capacity a little bit but go with steel it's cheaper but it will not melt so you get the idea like every time somebody fails you learn something from it collectively so a lot of research and development was done this engine was completely capable of like going shh, so you have to understand this like many times i see people like you know spacex try to you know do something that could not have been done like people did try to it's like that time technology was not good enough computers were not good heck uh, the computers that uh you, you know space shuttle had was like you know in tons right now you can do that in like you know few kilograms so people did try to do that so i whenever i see somebody like you know spacex made something impossible no they got the luxury of other people failing beforehand so what do you need in order to truly reuse something in fundamental level like what the heck do you need well you need spare fuel for landing now this is one of the amazing things about spacex spacex built a rocket from day one with mars goal in the mind so the rocket was overbuilt like crazy so even though space uh, nasa was like as a main contractor they were like dude we only need to send some tons of fuel uh, basically some tons of uh, resupply to uh, international space station but again spacex built overbuilt from day one they were like dude we're gonna overbuild it so their target was uh, like from the variant one version one let's call it was 10 tons which was already overbuilt then they keep pushing it keep pushing it, keep pushing it and right now they are around 20 tons so that is the whole idea that because they have such a large spare margin and their satellites are barely especially if they are sending something to low earth orbit is barely like you know one, uh, one ton or two tons they are like yeah we have uh, more than a spare margin to uh, attempt a real landing and that is why even many times you will see spacex saying we do not have enough margin for landing because again what if you are putting something that requires that 20 ton capacity specifically with geostationary mission you really need that like last oomph so you have to have spare fuel either you build your rocket ludicrously huge you do not go governmental route where like build as cheaply as possible and if you are like oh we need 10 tons rocket right now build a 10 ton and you're like oh dude we need 12 ton now with you know better satellite equipment and all that yeah strap on some boosters this uh you know for a reusable system you have to have a spare system from day one 
then your engine must be capable of relighting. Now, relighting is a very tricky thing. And if you have seen any SpaceX uh, live broadcast, you must have seen that green flame. I will explain what is that in later part of this video. But relighting a rocket engine is very tricky. Very few engines can reliably do that. And uh, in, because when you are talking about uh, uh, basically landing, you need energy for that. You need a uh, guidance for that. So space shuttle, even though it was like, you know, uh, gliding force, it, that's why it needed runway. But if you want to land on something like this, you need rocket again, like Douglas system. And relighting, thankfully, has become from 1970s to 1980s, it, it became very clear it's much more efficient to relight a second stage engine in uh, orbit to correct for geostationary orbit rather than requiring a rocket in the satellite itself. So people have figured out how to use relightable engines. So SpaceX got the benefit of that. Then you have to understand that if you are coming in from even as slow as Mark 5, it's not close to orbital speed, you are still talking such a fast speed that if you unbalance your craft, basically when you are, instead of going through the atmosphere, you are fighting with the atmosphere, atmosphere will win, which you can easily see in the recent demonstration of safety precaution. Basically, they ditched the Max-Q ejection system, they tried it, okay, everything worked, but the rocket ended up directly fighting the atmosphere and atmosphere is like, bro, what are you trying to do? You're going to be disintegrated and it was done. So you have to control the atmosphere. You cannot fight it. You have to glide with it. That is necessary. So you must have a way to properly aim yourself in space. And when you are going through the atmosphere, properly control yourself. So that is why the grid fins are so important. Then we come to the heat management aspect. Even if you are not talking about uh, basically second stage, the first stage still going Mark 5, still going like, you know, as high as like, you know, uh, 10 to 30 kilometers or sometimes even higher. So dropping from that altitude while you, again, your rocket is mostly empty right now, but still multi-ton object, it's going to heat up like crazy. So you have to have some way to manage the heat. Then you have to figure out how you're going to land it. Now, landing support is very critical. If you have seen uh, early videos of basically SpaceX landing, the landing legs have collapsed many times. It's like, you know, it landed and legs collapse and boom, things happen. So you have to design for landing itself. Then uh, there is another way of landing is basically you don't land at all because landing is very difficult, requires legs or waterproof proofing everything, which is very tedious. So electron rocket, which is a small rocket, it does not have enough margin to have landing legs. So what do they do? They're like, okay, deplete the rocket completely. Just have engine to like, you know, enough to like, you know, guide it, steer it and be like, okay, I'm coming in and then use parachutes. The benefit of parachute is that it will not touch anything. So they do not have to introduce the weight of a landing leg. However, you, they must have helicopters on standby when it's uh, landing and if the helicopter miss, it's done, it's useless. So landing system is a complete support you have to figure out. In case of SpaceX, they have to figure out that barge system. So what about Falcon 9? Now Falcon 9 right now is amazing. It's a most successful system out there, flat out. And they have learned a lot from their previous, uh, basically Falcon 4 versions, basically Falcon 9 version 4s. And they realized aluminum feels while cheaper, it used to melt, it requires so much repairing. They're like, dude, just throw it away. Just, just let it go. So they finally moved to titanium grid fins. Again, expensive, but it runs uh, for survive so long that they're like, you know, it's like buying better and then, you know, not spending money on repairs. Then cold grass thrusters was a necessary thing that they figured out that in space, uh, even though when you are entering the upper thin atmosphere, you really want to be in like perfect shape. Like you don't want to fight it even then. Like again, your rocket may survive it, but it may get cracked and metals cracks are very hard to find. So you really don't want to fight it. You're like, okay, I'm going to guide it perfectly. So the ballistic trajectory lines up with your aerodynamic desires. So cold grass thrusters really helps. It. This is what you see Pus 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 doing in the landing sequences and landing legs this also became so important that now they have crushed zones in them again they had from day one now they have fine-tuned that is why you rarely see nowadays that legs uh, you know getting damaged during landing even if it gets damaged the rocket does not tip over which was a very big issue in the early models so they have a crush core basically giant aluminum block, foam block quote and quote honeycomb yeah honeycomb and they, it crashes so rather than sending energy to the chassis which if dented it's use and throw uh, but they do not want to dent the chassis so they have a crush zone basically those puppy will absorb the energy they will get destroyed but the leg will survive they have to just open it up and replace that part and the chassis will be completely intact so again these are the things they learned after doing it experimenting with it and heat shield is a normal thing basically every time the main problem with heat shield is that we know how to make heat shield it's just we have to make heat shield light enough so are there any problems with Falcon 9? Absolutely, it's physics, reality. So the problem with main core problem with Falcon 9 is basically it's dirty boy. So the engines are dirty and the fuel is dirty. What does that mean? The engine is dirty. Engine is dirty because it does not have electrical ignition system. It relies on T-tab 
uh, ignition system that means there is a third propellant system that they have to figure out how the heck they're gonna have manage it and you must have seen many uh, whole uh, streamings where they're like dude we ran out of t-tap so rocket reignite failed and uh, that is a very big concern that is why raptor engine is like nope i'm not touching t-tap i'm gonna going full electric so they can restart it much more time and uh, t-tap itself is a very vo uh, volatile hoo-ha you don't want to toy around with it and then we come to the fuel aspect now fuel is the inherent limitation of this puppy because they are using kerosene now kerosene is not a good fuel or bad fuel it's simply a fuel problem with kerosene is because they are uh, not uh, basically using a, what we call open cycle and they have a scenario where going uh, you know burning what we classify as fuel rich basically one liter of fuel very little oxygen and tada so you get hot exhaust that hot exhaust is cold enough that you can turn the turbine without melting it but because it's fuel rich it creates a lot of soot and that soot is created in high oxygen environment so basically it's going to stick to metal and going to destroy it on a chemical uh, basically chemical level and that is the reason why these engines can only be used 10 times and uh, even that is like you know pushing it because the turbine starts to get damaged beyond repairable limits so inherently because of the fuel they are using because of the architecture they are employed it cannot uh, like you know run for it because you may think oh it's getting blacked out because of like you know jet engine uh, jet engine i'm saying rocket engine no it's getting blacked out because of the uh the pre-burner so to say pre-burner is making this all blacky and sooty and destroying the turbines and all that jazz so that also has to go second stage right now as it's designed it cannot be used now you might be like what if they have to only send something let's say lightweight let's say a few kilograms in lower orbit doesn't that mean this puppy would have more than enough spare delta v absolutely do the problem is the engine bell is designed for vacuum optimized so the moment they will fire this vacuum optimized engine in atmosphere the engine will create basically this is the nozzle you can have the flow flow will separate because again atmosphere is pushing it now when the moment you have that it will cause an oscillation and that oscillation will go boom you really don't want that that is why this nozzle is not uh, uh, convenient to relight it you cannot relight it in atmosphere it will self-destruct so these are the inherent problem with this like you can't bypass this these are the inherent problem with this so what we can expect in the future again uh, spacex have figured it out and uh, blue origins have already successfully landed their rockets they did it first but again it was non-orbital uh, system but they have also learned a lot and they are also moving to a cleaner fuel because the more closer to you come to hydrogen the better your engine is the but more uh, mileage you get but your uh, basically thrust the oomph that you have goes down you want to have carbon for that oomph so Kerosene has a lot of carbon, but problem is sooty output. Hydrogen is awesome, clean, uh, and that is why shuttle engine was completely reusable. But side effect is it's inherently weak. Basically, you gonna have huge tank and still not gonna have enough power to get off the ground. You have to have solid boosters. So what are you gonna do? Basically, how about find the middle ground where you have just enough hydrogen to get the mileage, but enough carbon to get the oomph. Methane is the perfect choice for that. So all the engines that are gonna be reused for uh, in the future missions will be methyl oxygen engines, CH4 and L liquid oxygen benefit of that even if you burn it fuel rich there is no probability of soot creation like flat out you don't even have to think about it it's like you burn fuel rich as much as you want you're still gonna get vapor rather than soot so that inherently makes the engine last longer then uh, the engines uh, again we learned a lot like spacex learned a lot blue origin learned a lot and they're like yeah this is how we're gonna design the engine which can support multiple reuse and uh, most of them are going with electrical spark system and second stage will be now designed with complete goal uh, of reuse that is why they have a c uh, you know c level uh, nozzles because if you fire vacuum optimized engine in the atmosphere uh, you're gonna go euro and better heat shields yeah because uh, spacex have the luxury of actually having a craft going into orbital velocity and landing which is known as dragon uh, system that is that is giving them a very good testing ground where they're gonna test out oh this is how a heat shield works this is how much weight we can remove still while still maintaining it uh, you know safety standard and all that because that is going through nasa it's double check triple check to the nth degree to make sure that it is safe enough so all these things basically the core change that's happening is we are making cleaner engines we are making engines that are far more efficient in terms of how the heck you're gonna reignite that puppy and because of the better heat dynamics and again the second stage that has the engine's capability of you know relighting itself in atmosphere without destroying itself so all these things will allow us a future where we're gonna have like you know oh this uh, booster combo has been used for like you know 30 times because this engine supposed to able to run around 50 times before they need to replace it so again, our future is kind of bright and at least one of them will figure it out like 100% reusable rocket. And I'm reasonably sure by 2030, we will miss it. Like this will be a common thing. And that time government will finally start to catch up. Like, yeah, we are also gonna make reusable rockets. 
so this was my presentation on uh, basically reusable systems i hope you liked it learn from it in that case please click the like button share it amongst your friends that will help me a lot if you didn't like it didn't enjoy it i'd urge you to press dislike press it twice so to show me your extra disappointment and please leave a comment because i reply to all of them subscribe press the bell icon if you're free and as always thanks for watching